all so much for joining me today. My name is Dr. Olivia Meadows. I am a clarinetist and an educator currently teaching at the Community College of Baltimore County in Maryland. And the repertoire that I'm presenting to you today was commissioned as part of my doctoral project at Arizona State University back in 2019. The first piece that you heard today is called Of Moons and Meadows and was composed in 2018 by Zachary Bush as part of this thesis project, which identified a gap in unaccompanied clarinet repertoire and then expanded the repertoire by commissioning five new pieces for unaccompanied clarinet through which students can learn both traditional and non-traditional techniques. This gap refers to the point during a student's studies when they are assigned or choose to perform contemporary repertoire that is either overplayed due to accessibility and use in pedagogy or includes difficult extended techniques like microtones, multiphonics, and more that can seem incredibly intimidating. The goal of this project was to create learning tools for these techniques in an enjoyable, an enjoyable pedagogical and performative way. Each of the first four works focuses on one technique, one aspect of clarinet technique, musicality, the altissimo register, microtones, and multiphonics, respectively. And the final work is a culmination of all of these techniques. So Of Moons and Meadows is written in the style of Wilson Osborne's Rhapsody, which is a standard piece that is performed consistently, regularly across the country by young developing clarinet students and as a result is often overplayed. As you can see on the handout provided, page three, the piece features detailed temporal instructions for the performer to follow, providing a clear musical path that the performer can choose to exaggerate at their will. The next piece that I'll be sharing today is called Ropes Course by Josh Gottry and it focuses on extending a student's altissimo range. This is a short version and again, it's called Ropes Course by Josh Gottry.
again, that was Ropes Course by Josh Gautry, the shortened version. And per standard and per standard repertoire and etudes or fundamentals books, it's typically expected for most students to be able to play up to a G6 at the early college level. As you may have noticed, Ropes Course uses repeated scalar lines and changes in articulation and dynamics to comfortably extend a student's range to the highest pitch in the piece, which is A6. Once a student has successfully navigated the shift from G6 to A6, it is significantly easier to extend the range even beyond that. The piece provides students with a fun and performance ready way, separate from etudes or scales, to work on their altissimo register. The next piece, we shift into extended techniques with a focus on microtones. This is a shortened version of My Own Thoughts by Kurt Mellenbacher. If you're unfamiliar with it, the term microtone refers to any pitch smaller than a semitone, and they are produced on the clarinet through adapted non-chromatic fingerings, which you may be able to see in the video performance. So I hope you enjoy a shortened version of My Own Thoughts by Kurt Mellenbacher.
that was a shortened version of My Own Thoughts by Kurt Mellenbacher featuring microtones on a clarinet. And as you could see and possibly hear if you have access to the handout, on page four, the composer used chromaticism, repetition, and enharmonic notes to seamlessly guide the performer towards feeling more comfortable with the unique fingerings. Since microtones don't require any other manipulations of the instrument to be produced, they are relatively easy, and students just have to get used to the non-traditional fingerings. We spend a lot of time working on scales and chromatic semitonal fingerings, so adjusting to something that feels different can take a little bit of time. This is what I think makes microtones an ideal introduction to extended techniques on, tech, on clarinet because the only change you need to make is in your fingerings. And once a student becomes a little more familiar with these non-traditional fingerings, it's easier to introduce multiphonics, which are also produced in part through the same or similar non-traditional fingerings. The next piece, Soliloquies by Spencer Brand, features multiphonics that are relatively easy to produce and a great introduction to this technique. Thank <laughs> you. 
again, that was Soliloquies by Spencer Brand. And since multiphonics require voicing manipulation in addition to non-traditional fingerings, they can be an intimidating extended technique for young adults to attempt. Now voicing, if you are not aware, refers to the manipulation of the oral cavity to produce certain pitches or effects. On a rating scale of one to five, that was recently created and published by a colleague and a friend of mine, Jack Liang. The multiphonics in this piece are of medium difficulty to provide. I believe they are threes and fours on that scale. Um, and that information can be found online as well. Writing the same multiphonics throughout the piece, along with successive chromatic multiphonics, makes accurate production of these multiple pitches much more likely and easy, easy to do. So finally, we come to the end of the program with a piece that puts together all of the techniques we've discussed today, and it's called Winter Fantasy by Eric Mandat. If you don't know, Eric Mandat is one of the, most for, the foremost composers for clarinet repertoire with extended techniques, and I'm proud to say that this piece is, I think, the most accessible in his repertoire for performers who are looking to learn about extended techniques or being newly introduced to extended techniques. The melodic treatment of the microtones and multiphonics really brings this program full circle, and I hope you enjoy this final piece as much as I do. Again, it's Winter Fantasy by Eric Mandat. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Once again, that piece was Winter Fantasy by Eric Manda. I'd like to say thank you all for joining me today for this presentation. Thank you so much to Silverstein for hosting this virtual Woodland Fest. If you have any questions about the repertoire, the project in general, or extended techniques, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is on the handout provided. And if you do not have access to the handout, my email address is olivia.l.meadows at gmail.com. Thanks so much.